Geek.net has everything you need to keep your vehicle looking its best. Mothers, Meguiar's, Wolfgang, Diamond Eye, 3M, Pinnacle, and more. AutoGeek.net carries over 60 brands. AutoGeek's selection is huge, our prices are low, our expert staff can answer any question you have, and we ship right to your door. AutoGeek.net. We are car care. Welcome back to day two of AutoGeek.net's Helping in the Heartland. We're back here in Lincoln, Nebraska for our second day of live feeds on our 69 AMX overhaul. Now, hopefully you guys had a chance to follow us yesterday throughout the day. If not, check out those feeds online. What we're going to do is give you a little bit of a recap here of what we've been up to. Now, if you remember back or you heard the story, uh, Wes and Phil Headers reached out to our resident expert, Mike Phillips, on the AutoGeek.net forum, asking for a little help for a project, a special project he's doing for a close family friend. Basically, he's overhauling a 69 AMX for a guy we refer to as the doctor. Um, and uh, what he's trying to do is give this vehicle to his son. So as part of the process, he's enlisted Mike and the AutoGeek.net A team to go ahead and do a complete sand buff and cut, or sand cut and buff, of a uh, brand new paint job for this vehicle. So our five-person A-team is hard to work, as you guys can see on day two. These guys worked about 10 hours yesterday on the project, and believe it or not, it's going really smooth. Unlike most reality TV you guys see where people are throwing stuff, arguing, yelling, fighting, this is going smooth. There's smiles on faces. We see machine work going on, and everybody seems to be pretty happy and harmonious over here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Now, one thing I've noticed is we've got our two guys over here, our four members who volunteered to come out and do this. They're working by hand. These guys over here all have cool tools to work with. How do you guys get stuck using blocks and sandpaper? You don't get any cool tools to play with. Have to have skill. Skill, huh? <laughs> so, so you guys are about 10 hours in. You've got no skill, but you're, you're sweat equity here. <laughs> so what's happening, you guys? What are you working on? Um, well, this fender's curved, so we're using round blocks to work our way through the curve so we don't dig into the uh, clear coat. Okay. And uh, just putting... 1,000 and then 1,500, and then they'll come back with the uh, machines and do 3,000 and 5,000. Now, Ben, this is your first time. Well, actually, you're pretty much an expert yourself now after doing this for about 10 hours. Yeah. You know, is this a no-brainer now doing all the sand wet sanding and stuff? Yeah, it's a pretty easy process. i uh, learned from both Ben and Mike, so it's coming along very, very smooth. All right, very cool. Hey, Wes, you're in the back here working hard away, buddy. What is your take, man? You're, we are one day in. And I think the thing is starting to come together a little bit. Mike seems to think we're on, we're on pace to get this thing finished tonight. What do you think? I think uh, we've got a pretty good chunk taken out of it. I think tonight is going to be a, an excellent night to just review what we've done the last couple of days. I really think uh, calling the best guy in the world to come in here and do the car for us is probably the best thing we ever did. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Now, we're glad to come and help out. All right, now it's time to check in with Mike. Put the power tool away for a second, buddy. <laughs> Give us your expert analysis. What's happening here? How are these guys doing this? First thing I want to ask you, your volunteer crew. Oh, you know what? Uh, I would trust these guys on any car after today. They're really doing an outstanding job. You know, and sanding is actually an art form. It's a craft and an art form. Uh, it's a craft because it takes a certain amount of skill to do it right and not make a mistake. Right. But it's an art form because it takes passion. I always say it takes the human elements of care and passion to actually do this. Because you've got to put your heart into this. Right. And know? these guys aren't getting paid. They volunteered. They, they right. brought them one from one from Florida, one from five hours from Iowa to come here and help out. Man, it says a lot about people's integrity. I'll tell you that. Yeah, and and uh, not only are we having a lot of fun, but uh, there's just really no place you can go to get this kind of training. You know, of work on a muscle car, fresh paint job, and learn how to wet sand cut and buff. And learn from the best. Man. Wow, <laughs> come on. Hey. Uh, this is my passion, you know, I've been doing this all my life, and uh, I just, I love doing this kind of work. Even though it's really hard, I love doing this kind of work. Yeah, I mean, and it's, you know, you've got to have a, a special talent to do it because you can't rush through it. Me, I've right. made a lot of, i got a machine in my hand, and I'm going to buff through that bad boy, but that's not what you want to do with this yeah. type of a project. Yeah, we, we have a thing we call the wild man technique. That's bad technique, and that's, <laughs> if you've ever watched the guy and you see him, he's just flying across a panel with a buffer, and all that's going to do is, is basically just skimming over the 
paint. It's going to leave a lot of swirls. Probably do more damage than good. And if you watch when any of us are buffing, we're slowly and very methodically running the pad and removing the sanding marks. And uh, like I said, it's an art form. It's a you got to do everything right. Use the right pad. Use the right technique. But also you got to be focusing on the task at hand. You can't look away and be talking and thinking about other things. Well, real quick, you said that they're using the right technique. Give us a demonstration of the right technique to go ahead and, and, and use the flex machine here. Well, for some, the, some, uh, sure. Compound. Sure. In this case here, right before you came over here, I put a strip of product here. Uh, can you pick that up, Yancy? You want me to flip this around? Okay. So there's a strip of product right here. And this is a three inch wool cutting pad. I have this on an extension right here. And what this does is this gets the buffing pad away from the bulk of the body of the tool so I can see what the pad's doing without the body of the tool in the way. Sure. And what I'm doing first is we've sanded down this entire side of this fender. And then we've taken the uh, blue vinyl 3M tape and taped off the edges. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and do what I call edge it. So I'm going to remove all the sanding marks with the small pad close to the edge and into the corners. Then I'll come out and knock out the major part of the panel with the larger pad. Okay. And so that's just a little technique. A lot of guys would do the whole thing with the big pad. And I've been doing that here too. But sometimes it's just nice to be able to get in there with the right tool for the job and just do a real precision buffing job. So to me, it's almost like if I'm painting my house, you do the outside edges with the, with the trim brush and you hit the roller in the middle. Great so, analogy. Yeah. Great analogy. See, yeah, we, for an outsider, i got to kind of put in <laughs> terms I can, I can uh, visualize a little bit. You know, yeah. it makes sense to me. Exactly. Well, I call this surgical buffing. And so, you know, and uh, hey, if you're doing uh, production work, it's not a big deal. But when you're doing something like this, you really want it to turn out, you know, um, our name is going to be all over this. Right. So we want to make sure it turns out right. We Especially want to be proud of this. Yeah, exactly. you got a rep to protect, buddy. <laughs> I'll let you get back to work. Hey, okay. Ben, I want to check in with you real quick. Now, this is your baby, and it's hard for you to pass it off anybody because you painted this thing. Normally, you don't let anybody else touch it. We got some novice guys. You've got, well, I don't know what you call West. I'm sure there's a bunch of different names for it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, brother. And uh, you got Mike working on all this stuff, man. How do you feel about how it's coming together? Um, I'm really happy. I mean, you know, at first I was nervous having people that have never touched a fresh paint job before, but I have full confidence in them. Um, take the load off of my shoulders. You know, they're doing all the work. So... Um, no, I'm really happy with everything that's going on. All right, so you open the door here. Where are we at? Is this just about finished, or what, yeah. what are we looking at? Yeah, we're just about finished here. Um, I got a couple little areas I got to hit. Um, as Mike said, the precision buffing part of it. Okay. Um, I know it's a tape off this one, so yeah. you, so you're, you hit all those lines. When you say a few spots, you still have to do some more compounding, or, or is there a point are we at buffing yet? Uh, just compounding. Okay. Uh, we're still compounding. Um, we will be switching to polishing later, but uh, we're just going to try and get everything compounded. Okay, very cool. All right, so I think what the game plan here is to finish all the loose pieces, so to speak, with the, um, get those all compounded, then they're going to attack the shell, and that's got its own challenges along the way. I think to see the experts in the back where the tight radius is off, so the novice guys getting the flat planes, but the whole deal up here is to get everything done in terms of rut work, so to speak, and get everything compounded, and it's all done in your one big shot of, uh, of buffing. Am I right, Mike? Exactly. And buffing and polishing out? Yep. <clears throat> Yeah, we'll finish all the sanding and compounding to every single panel, and that's what I call the grunt work. Uh, did a lot of chopping, you know, and then we're going to get in there and just do all the polishing. That's when we switch over to foam pads and medium cut polishes and fine cut polishes. And at that point, you know, if we do a great job of getting all the sanding marks out, everything else is just a cakewalk. I mean, yeah. it's just easy. Well, Even you could do it. <laughs> all right. You know, I might, you might have to show me how to do it because I like the finished product because I can sit there for a second and go, wow, look what a great job I did. And you all have all the hard work done for me. Yeah, hey, well, if you stand around, I'm putting a polish in your hand. So. <laughs> all right, that's the deal. Hey, you know what, though? Got a, a great surprise because we've talked about. The doctor being uh, this his project. Well, he just walked through the door here. You come on in here, doctor, real quick. I'm not going to shake your hand because I'm uh, under the weather a little bit. But I'm going to give you a pound. Welcome aboard. It's good to finally meet you. We'll get a chance to talk to you in a little bit. But we are about short on time here. We're coming back at 11 o'clock for another live feed. I want to thank all the sponsors that brought us here today. First, Mad Mac to UglyEat.net, man. It wouldn't be possible without you springing us all out here for this project. Thank you, guys from Manzerna, Flex, Lake Country Pads. We've got Wes and his buddies at Pro Headers, that's his company, and uh, No Coast Customer Rod Shop and the guys from 3M. Doctor, I know you're happy to talk, and I want you to get a chance to walk around and look at all this before we get to, to talk to you about it. So uh, we'll be back at 11 o'clock, you guys. Join in, for us, uh, join in with us then. Appreciate it. Well, not bad, huh? Wonderful. Coming together.